I will present the pros and cons of the Samoan uh, circle and open space. The pros of the Samoan circle is that it gives the experience of being listening to a small group discussion, um, a conversation or a dialogue, um, and it can be observed or you can also participate. Um, but it could be observed, this small group discussion by a larger uh, group and listening to people's own opinions. Um, and it is uh, largely like a self-monitoring, um, so there might not be a meeting uh, leader once the conversation um, starts, although I have seen that it is often used just to keep the conversation going and flowing, having a facilitator can be great. So that's something added, it's not, not something that traditionally the um, s that traditionally exists in the Samoan uh, circle. A con is that um, it leads to interaction, but not necessarily to agreements, and people might be very uh, skeptical at first um, because the format is um, unf unfamiliar. Um, some people might not be so great at listening, um, so they kind of like tune off or like um, get bored. Um, some people might not want to participate in the inside circle because um, they don't want everybody to um, listen to their opinions. So this is best for people who are less shy, right? And like to um, contribute. Um, although at the same time, it allows for those that are shy to just simply listen if this is what they wanted um, to to do. A pro of the open space is that people um, get to discuss the topics that they want, and that that is like very um, exciting for a lot of um, people. Um, the, they get to talk about their greatest concerns and interests. Um, the process is very open and visible. People can move around whenever they want. They don't have to be stuck in a conversation if they're like um, getting bored there or if they want to check out two conversations at the same time, they can do that. And at the end they get the harvest, which um, it really gives them an overview of everything that happened in all those uh, small conversations. Um, the con is that the uh, agency that you're working for cannot prescribe the topics. You can only um, prescribe a theme and people can't um, choose whatever they want. So it's possible that participants will not address the topics that are of concern to you, to the agency. So that's why it's, um, later on when we talked about more specifically about chapter eight, why it's so important that you um, as an agency determine what you want to get out of the meeting and then you choose the format because this might not be a great format if you want to um, talk about specific topics. Um, and this is like um, f what, you know, why framing the conversation at least um, if you're going to use open space might be useful to you, but you really have to think um, uh, if this is something that it will be best serve your purposes. Um, and the technique also requires meeting space um, where everybody can come together and where everybody can break out in smaller um, groups and um, to have like the discussion going and the way that it's set up, it, re it needs a lot of um, uh, logistics um, to figure out how to do a uh, well uh, organized um, open space. Uh, now we will actually move to chapter eight and this chapter will help you um, in designing different kinds of meetings such as um, planning meetings with your own staff um, members uh, tax forces, advisory groups, uh, the planning commission, the city council, and um, community councils. These meetings might be small or they might have hundreds of people. This chapter provides uh, guidance on how to identify what type of meeting is appropriate for the task um, that you want to perform. It is important to remember that format uh, follows function you need to ask yourself, what is the purpose of this meeting? Uh, what do I want to get at the end as an agency? So step number one is for you to review the public participation objectives and information exchange um, for the stage that you are in the decision making um, process. So this is something that you will have in the, your public participation um, plan. Are we liking 
window one of engagement, two or three? Um, are we just getting it started or are we thinking about um, now more um, implementation issues um, and, and so on? Then with your team, you need to get an agreement of what you hope uh, to um, accomplish with the public during this meeting. So this is step number two. Meetings might be held for a number of purposes. For example, to provide information to the public. Um, so it might be a one-way communication, solicit views from the public or preferences, um, alternatives. Um, or you can uh, have things that are like very interactive between groups um, or not. Um, you might want to get an agreement and a decision. So again, you just have to figure out um, what you want to get from the public. Uh, figure number 8.1 on James Crenton's book is a, uh, it's, it's nice because it's asking these questions in um, this little table, such as um, in which step you are in the decision making process, um, what do you hope to accomplish? Then you ask who is the target audience, which topics will be covered, um, which um, information you can then, uh, with, with this information, um, you can then start thinking about um, what is the uh, meeting format. So again, format, follows function. We will move towards um, these other questions in the rest of our discussion. Uh, what are the public participation objectives in this particular step of the public participation process? How the information from this meeting will be used in the uh, decision-making process? What is the level of interaction needed to accomplish uh, the meeting objectives? What are the techniques that we are going to use? For example, are you going to use large or small group discussions or maybe a combination of the two? And finally, once you know if you have a big group or a small group discussion, then you can start thinking about the space and the logistics um, related to that meeting. Step three is to discuss how will you use the information that you received from the public. One way to clarify the purpose of the meeting is to ask yourself, how will we use the information we receive during this public meeting? For example, the information you receive might be used to help you define the range of alternatives that will be considered in any given plan or it might help you to select a preferred um, alternative. Or it might help you to define some mitigation uh, measures that need to be taken in order to protect the environment. Once you know what you need to learn from the uh, meeting, that tells you the purpose of the meeting. A step four is to identify the audiences or stakeholders that you expect that will participate in your public participation process. Meetings have different audiences. If the purpose of the meeting is to get an agreement uh, on the methodology for assessing habitats or determine the net present cost of the alternatives, the audience will be an expert audience uh, drawn from technical people that work in other agencies or in nonprofits, businesses um, that can afford professional staff or that it have um, the technical knowledge to engage in this conversation. Um, at the other stream are meetings that the purpose um, can only be served if you include people um, that are community residents that um, know about that community but it might not have um, any technical expertise in um, water quality or whatever is the issue um, that um, that is more more technical so here you will be talking for example about parks and about how people use parks and what they would like to see um, in the future uh, development of parks in the next like 10 or 20 years. So in that case you really want to involve uh, more like general members of the public and you want also like as broad representation as possible 
of that um, public. So again, people from different ages and races um, and different perspectives. Um, the way to frame the question is like who or what audience needs to participate in order to achieve the purpose of this um, meeting. A step five is to list the topics that need to be covered during your meeting. Once you're clear on the purpose um, of the meeting and the audience that you are trying to reach, list the topics that mo must be addressed. Um, this will help you again with an agenda, create an agenda uh, with like topic number one, two or three that I'm going to be discussing. Um, this is the, again, the beginning of that meeting agenda.